Good evening, and thank you very much, uh, Sanas, for the kind introduction. He has become a good friend of mine. You know, he has promoted from second class to first class honors. I never got a first class in the medical school. So thank you, Sanas, for this. Uh, quite a lot of what he said was true, but some of it was because out of friendship, he has elevated me even higher. So I'm most grateful. I brought my glass of water because Rohana is like my brother. I, I come and stay with Chandrika and Rohan all the time. And in case I choke when I'm giving this emotional oration, I kept my glass of water. So if I do that, then you'll understand why. Well, Sanath, and I'm very grateful to you for inviting me to give this first inaugural oration. So I've chosen the title of the lecture as Leadership of Pro Professional Organizations. And I'll tell you why I chose the topic when it comes to the oration. So that is uh, Dr. Hathotua. So the objective of my talk is to learn Dr. Rohana Hathotua's leadership qualities to lead several organizations. He is president of Sri Lanka College. He was president of, he is president of Suffolk now. He is president of the South Asian Menopause, president of Organized and Justice, is chairman of Nine Wells, chair of Figo Committee, Secretary General of Air Force. So I want to really scrutinize whether he deserves all these positions to be such a leader. So you have to bear with me. I'll put the leadership qualities and then we'll go through. And you can judge for yourself whether he deserves to be in all these positions. Well, first of all, the question is, did Dr. Hathutu lead the professional organizations to be successful? Did he lead Sri Lankan College? the Suffolk to be successful. That's the quality of the leader. So I put five criterions based on which I'm going to judge him and also later on bring some individual leadership qualities. Any professional organization has to be proactive with CPD and guidelines activities and he has been promoting that. So I can give a tick for that. I've been reactive when there is adverse outcomes like the COVID-19, he appointed Hemante Pereira to lead on the guidelines and he has been active. Financially viable and to generate income, I know he has been very successful in raising finances. Uh, for the Sri Lankan College with Marlene, they worked hard at that time with all, all of you to put up the building. So he has been financially very viable. And whether he sought to continue the growth of organization to draft in active, devoted younger members. I think he has got a lot of followers, not only in Sri Lanka, but also in other countries in Suffolk who are following his uh, steps. And whether he can tackle the government, the national NGOs, non-governmental organization, donors, and other professional organizations. I can put a tick for that as well because he has been collaborating with the government I've gone with him to a number of uh, occasions to meet the minister and the director and so on. Some or other he has a way how to get in through the back door or the side door and uh, get to the activities. And recently I signed memorandum of understanding with WHO and the UNICEF and so on. So he has, and also has built relationship with Figo. I can see Marianne Lumsden, I'm, I'm sure she will vouch for that. Uh, he has got a character to get hold of all the professional organizations. And finally, to contribute and assist them to members, public, and the authorities, because if you are any organization, you have to support authorities. And I know that he worked very well with Family Health Bureau. Now he's working closely with the WHO in Delhi. So the question now is, how did the inheritor acquire his leadership qualities? Where did it come from? Is it genetic? Did he grow and somebody taught him? And has he got the qualities of a leader described in the literature? So I did some literature search and what are the qualities of the leader? Has he got some of it? So I given in the tick box, he had done everything for the organization. But you can't take it for granted because somebody else could have done it for the organization and he was the whole showing his face. Might be the secretary general, might be the treasurer must have done it. So you have to now judge his individual qualities. So I'm going to start organizing from the very beginning, whether there was any genetic issues involved. And this is uh, with his cousins. Rowan has a humble posture and gentle smile. 
I'm not going to show where he is. Can you spot him? Right at this end. That's correct. So very humble smile and very shy. So how did this shy boy become a leader? That's a big question mark. Now this is with his younger brother and sisters. Again, everybody is smiling. He's having a very serious face. So he's thinking, you know, he's lost. My siblings are here. Now he's thinking very hard. Now that is with in Castle Street. And he's the, he is now moving up the scale. He has become the center of attraction. Suddenly seated in the middle and smiling. So he has trying to move his way up. And I'll show you how he has moved his way up as we go along. This is with Chandrika and his children, Lasal and Ranbula. And again, Chandrika is smiling. He is with a serious face. <laughs> now he is smiling, but there he is. So he is thinking about becoming a leader. So he is not focusing on his family. <laughs> now he has started smiling with his family. Once he has become the leader, he is smiling. Till then he was not smiling. Now he has a good smile with his wife Chandrika, Vasal and Randula. So he has done well. So in between, what has he done, we can look. So his parents and his Chandrika life partner who have guided to set the moral and ethical compass for his life. So I think to be a leader, you must have a good moral and ethical compass. And I think I would attribute to that to his parents and Chandrika, his wife, who has molded him on the ethical and moral line. But of course, we have to acknowledge his teachers. Like very young, he was, he himself acknowledges with an inverted commas I put that Mr. Edris Singer gave him the, uh, laid a solid foundation and Errol Fernando from St. Thomas in Mount Lavinia. He taught him how to pass the examination. That is when he went back and respected the teachers. So he's building qualities to respect his teachers, so his parents, his teachers. So the moral compass is said to be a leader. Then he acknowledges those who became mentors when he became an obstetrician. Nalin Rodrigo was president and then patron. He says he created the interest for him to do the OMG. And Professor Nani Akkara, who was also president and patron of the Sri Lankan College. And uh, he states, changed our life in surgery completely, infused us the needed confidence and courage to practice this very stressful field. So I think we can look at Professor Nani Akkara, he's the same. He is very serious and he, has, he cracks jokes once in a way, but otherwise he's also serious. So Rona is listening very carefully with a smile. So the smile has now become a prominent feature. Now with Bhante Kurukula Surya, he says, he taught us what life is all about and the finer points of practice of ONG. And Harsha Senegaratna, one of the former presidents of the Sri Lankan College in Suffolk, he says, help me to stand up alone as an individual. And you can see Rohana was senior lecturer at that time when Harsha was professor. Then his friends, Malik Gunavadana and Dr. Pali Samaragi, and he states, they helped him in preparing for my postgraduate exams and always stood by me since their friends. So Malik, you didn't know that, but he acknowledges your friendship there. And Narayan Patel, he's now Lord Patel, helped me with my overseas training at Nine Wells. So the Nine Wells Hospital was named after the Nine Wells Hospital where he worked in Dundee. So he's showing some sort of patriotism to where he was trained. This picture was not seen by Chandrika. <laughs> the girls all surrounding and and you can look at his smile, suddenly everything is beaming, you know. He's <laughs> then of course the other picture was with uh, Lord Patel and Professor Nani Akara when they visited. And now you see the same picture, his smile is not the same. <laughs> Gentle smile, but not the same when he was getting a massage from the theater staff. <laughs> now he is with Chandrika, of course he is entertaining, and Ian Duncan and Mary Crowder and others, and this is his MRCOG photograph with Chandrika. They are looking both young, and he is smiling now because he got the membership in his bag, so he is uh, happy. Then, of course, he is building his career, not as a professional, but to become a leader. He started visiting various people, and that was with 
Professor Ratnam, who was my boss as well, and he says, like a father to me, introduced me to the outside world and helped me with my postgraduate specialization. And Ananda Kumar uh, is no more. He taught him about assisted reproduction with Professor Bong, so he's an embryologist. So he was able to start the IVF for the infertile couples in Sri Lanka. That is with me. He comes to me to get uh, some, work out some plans for weekend seminars in Sri Lanka. So when Professor Wilfred Pereira was president and Rowena was secretary general, I don't know for how many years, must be more than a decade, I think. Always I see him giving vote of thanks. Uh, and so I used to come during the weekend, bring somebody from abroad and run weekend seminars. So we are planning what seminars to run. So with me, it's all serious discussion, uh, carousel of slides, books, and so on. With the others, he's having a drink and enjoying himself. Now this is his good mentor and friends, Dr. D.K. Tank and Nalini Tank, who have encouraged and persuaded and pushed him to do well, and Chandrika knows them well. They're also my family friends, and Jadeep Tank, he says up and coming dynamic star from Mumbai. So Jadeep, you better be up and coming, otherwise you are in trouble. He is somewhere there, close friend and colleague. Now this is when they started the first IVF program here called the Vindana Reproductive Health and you can see him with Professor Bongso and the team and after that he started the Nine Wells Care. So his professional development to support and help women because 10% of couples need some sophisticated investigation so he devoted his time. Then he built his own Nine Wells Hospital in Colombo. You can see the impressive building and you can see Chandrika Basal and Rondula there with the former president and then prime minister, or prime minister then who became later president, and you can see Dr. Tang, and uh, C. Saraj. So he wanted to give, this is the only hospital which looked only for women for respectful care. So he started this concept of respectful care long before anybody started it in this country. So I think we are grateful. I think many of the consultants that have worked there so he was a forerunner and here with the staff and you can see that he's happy with a number of staff but by the time he stepped down as chairman there were more than that. Then he became Sri Lankan College president and you can see him with uh, Professor Wilfred Pereira and Indraji and Hemanta and so on and Marlene as well there. And they used to run workshops and here he's taking his people on a tour to Candy and I don't know, you might be able to uh, recognize somebody, Padmini Isaac from Bangalore and uh, so on. And this is with his good uh, colleagues and uh, Hemanta Perura was there running the Safe Motherhood Workshop in Haddon, but when Air Force came first, we had it in Ratnapura when Hemanta was working there. So, and Indraji and, so Mark's friends, he's uh, quite happy. You can see Indraji is smiling, Marlene is smiling and so on. Then he was, in my view, he was instrumental in pushing the college, Marlene, I'm sure, will agree to restart the fundraising campaign to start building the college. And he got hold of his colleagues to uh, get people to donate. And uh, this was the opening of the auditorium. And uh, then when he stepped down, he was very happy. Uh, he has establish the building and it's thriving now and I'm so happy to come to Sri Lankan College because it's one of the uh, colleges which can be proud of having our own big building. Not only that, his organizational skills, not only in establishing hospitals and services, but then he became a professional leader and he got the Sri Lankan Golden Jubilee Conference, he was the main organizer. He got the participation of the Asia Oceana Federation, the Royal Colleges in Australia, UK, Air Fog, and you can see this colorful picture. And uh, he doesn't come to the limelight. He's uh, waiting there, and you can, I don't know whether you can spot him right behind, but he's behind the president and the health minister. So he's really putting the shoulders, then if they didn't behave well, he might have pushed them, you know. I hope he will be 
gone into politics, but you didn't. Um, so that is actually a marvelous conference which I attended. I can see and Fraser and so many people attended. And it was a wonderful to bring the reputation of Suffolk, Sri Lankan College, and so on to the forefront. And this having a Chandrika Kumaranathunga. She was the president of the Sri Lanka. And he's having a happy smile and uh, talking away. And these are pictures not known to the family, so I'm showing it today for the first time. So he is rubbing shoulders with not only the professional leaders, but with national leaders, like the presidents and the prime ministers and so on. And then he started spreading his wings and here he is in Japan and Korea and trying to build friendship. And Ochia is there as well. And uh, Ravi Chandran, he later took off the Air Force. And this is, he's more comfortable with friends. This is uh, after a workshop. And I'm sure you can recognize Professor Chowdhury and the team from Bangladesh and Pakistan. I'm very comfortable and with Alakondu, Shyam Desai and so on. Now the, uh, these are the planning meetings. So he's now trying to build up. He was the founding secretary of the Suffolk. These are the different meetings. And I think Farooq was at that time president and they are discussing serious matters. And then they organized the Suffolk RCOG meeting in London. And that was the first time they organized this major meeting with Alakondu as president. And he would get hold of me and say, we are doing it. So nothing doing. We can't say yes or no. If he says that is it. And Rowan has to carry out his duties because then only he can become to the front. Now this is a number of pictures to remind Suffolk because these are Suffolk Silver's Jubilee meeting. And so they have been cooperating quite well with the Suffolk in the Sri Lankan college. And here then he becomes Suffolk's the menopausal medicine and he was inducted president uh, of Suffolk's in 2021. And he was chair of the menstrual disorders committee and adenomyosis and so on and he was the chair but he's politely standing in a corner and letting everybody else uh, I think this picture probably was taken in Singapore with E.L. Young there and this is the uh, Asia Oceana program way back in Gaul in 1991 with Jeffrey Bishop there at Thunderizer and Rona is hidden there because you can't see him there you can see part of him there so he's behind. Now I'm going to show the picture like a chess game, how he comes to the front. So now if you look at him with the Air Force Council, can you spot Rohana? He's on the third row smiling. Can you all see him there? This laser point is not uh, working or not projecting because of the back projection. So he's in the third row. Now he's in the second row. He has come with the Air Force Council. And the next one will show that he has moved into the front row. So he is a leader who can push his way around and mesmerize people either by smiling or by performing. Because to become a leader, to be recognized, you have to be performing. So I'm just teasing him, but actually his performance made him become the leader from one to the other to the other. So he is now in the front row uh, and next to Ravi Chandran. And then here he is as Secretary General of uh, the Asia Oceana Federation with the current president, uh, Tani Randolph. And Professor Ochia is also there on the side, immediate past president. So he did a lot of work for Asia Oceana Federation, I think probably about 20 odd years, coming step by step, not giving his mind, but to persist and also to be consistent with the assistance he gave to the Asia Oceana Federation. And this is the council meeting, and again, you can see us come to the front row and leading. And uh, he started uh, office for the Asia Oceana Federation at the Sri Lankan College. So this is uh, the opening. So he housed the Asia Oceana Federation at the Sri Lankan College headquarters. So he is now housing the Suffolk treasury issues as well as the with Ratnasiri leading as treasurer and the Asia Oceana Federation uh, from this building. Then he was elected the president of uh, organizers and gestosis. Sanjay Gupta is here and uh, he is handing over 
the presidency to uh, Rohana. I'm just witnessing and seeing what he can do, and he organized some nice conferences and his activities carry on. But I'm also grateful to him to have given assistance to initiate the postpartum IUD initiative in Sri Lanka. When I was a house officer at Castle Street, my job was to do a tubal ligation list from morning till evening, and there was a competition going on between the SHOs. How many lists of uh, litigation, uh, ligation did you do? 10, 20? That was the competition. But we didn't look at the woman who was only 20 and 25 years old with two children. And during the tsunami time, I know that there were women who had lost children of 10 and 15, but they couldn't come back and get the due preserved. So I think it is something which we wanted to do through Spigo, and I felt very guilty about it. And I told Rohan, and he was pushing me, pushing me, and one day he organized a room for me and said, take the call to the donor and talk to the donor. So I spoke to the donor and we started initiating the postpartum IUD program. And we had the confidence that we can do the pilot. They, the, the, they didn't want to give money unless we can prove that the sepsis and the dropout rate is small. So we took Sri Lanka as the pilot to uh, demonstrate that over 18 months and they gave the grant to do in Safak countries. It was not under Safak, but we did it in India, in Bangladesh, in uh, Nepal and so on. But this is a team from Sri Lanka and I'm ever so grateful to Gamini, Ratnasri, and Sanjeeva Gudagandagi from the Family Health Bureau. And Rohan helped me a lot because whenever I come on the visit, either if not by his help, I'd take a train or a bus and go to Arizavela and Ampare and all that. But he kindly took part very seriously, gave some lectures, and made it a successful project. And uh, I can see Sanat at the corner there. He might also edge his way to the middle as time goes on in other organizations. Now, not only he was involved with the Asia Ocean and the South Asian and so on, this is our medical school. And during one of the visits here, the dean, Jennifer Pereira, who is there, she said to me, you know, it was all barren land in the middle quadrangle and she wants to make something beautiful for the teachers and students to sit. That is how it is now, but before that it was all like a concrete jungle. And here Rohana has raised funds, and through this uh, Colombo Medical School, his batchmates, he raised two million, and he gave a million on his own, and the quarters are there. So he's a generous chap, so if you all want to do some fundraising, go to him, and he will support you. But it has to be for a good cause. And this picture is very wonderful, because this is the only time he got disappointed with life. It looks very wonderful because Professor Wilfred Pereira there, I'm there. Dr. Siri Sena is here, LAW Siri Sena. Siri is uh, my hostel maid and uh, mentor. And by the way, his daughter is Saroja Siri Sena, who is the Excellency, the High Commissioner in London. So Siri and I were invited uh, by the Vice Chancellor, Chandrika. Uh, to open a building to make it the women's hospital, and that belonged to Professor Siva Chinnatambi, whose picture is there. Why do I say disappointed? Because Rohana was saying to me all the time, Siva Chinnatambi will write a will and donate that house to the Sri Lankan college, which didn't happen. She wrote the will to the university, and Chandrika Vijayaratna, who is there, the vice chancellor, decided to put it at a, not to give it to the college, but to put a women's hostel for 28 girls, a beautiful building, and so it was very good of him. And so we all supported that, although it didn't come to Sri Lankan College, but Sri Lankan College had the building already by that time. The next picture is actually during the war time. I can see Kanishka Karnaratna there, Sara Tamare, so many people from the college went and organized work at Chattikulam Hospital where the refugees came. And so we are all grateful for his philanthropic activity as well, not only the medical school, but also to the uh, reconstruction efforts in Chattikulam. Now these are some of the old pictures uh, with the school, with his friends. I can see Shyam Desai and Parikshit and Parul there. 
and so on. So he's not only uh, enjoying himself, so he has a certain amount of work-life balance because as a leader, if you don't have work-life balance, you'll get burnt out. So here he is with one of the teachers, Sharif Dean, and uh, that is with Ian Fraser. And to build leadership qualities, you have to move with leaders. So you can really know what, what are the characteristics of certain leaders. So Ian Fraser was certainly a big leader. He was the president, he no more, but he was the president of the Royal Australian New Zealand College. And he was the chair of the Menstrual Disorders Committee of FIGO, which he handed over to Rohan. And that's with the infectious diseases, then with his mentor, David Taylor, and with Jack Shearer. Now, at the bottom picture, Jack Shearer was the president of FIGO and a very phenomenal figure. So he must have, not only he had a genetic tendency to become a leader, he must have imbibed various characteristics from the leaders he moved with. My picture is also not there, it's there, but he didn't imbibe anything from me, but from the others. So now I'm going to the serious part. Now you have seen him moving his way up like a chess board, up and down, and then coming from the back seat to the front seat. But look at, look at the literature and see whether they, he has good quality as a leader. So the good leader of any organization has the ability to motivate and direct those in the organization to achieve their best for betterment of the organization to serve the communities. So I think that he does, he has an ample, because I see the emails running from Safog about that meeting, this meeting, everything. And so he is quite forceful in trying to friendly, but in a firm way to be assertive. So he's decisive, but not bossy. He is visible, but not controlling. That's how I will put it. He is, some people call that phrase as a smiling tiger. You know, he's uh, smiling, but he wants the work done. Otherwise he might be hard on him, but I don't think he's ever hard on anybody. So he is decisive and visible, but not controlling or bossy. So as a successful leader, you have to lead the team by providing direction, demonstrate high moral standards, encourage ethical practice, being considerate about the needs of individual team members. So he has the qualities of doing all that with high moral and ethical standards. So he sets and maintains high standards, supports safety and quality in adhe adhering to acceptable practice. And the good behaviors he has, he introduces himself to new and familiar settings whenever he meets people. He follows the organizational protocols. He sets the agenda and runs the meetings quite well and requests all team members to observe the high standards. He doesn't have the poor qualities of a leader. This I put for information for those who are going to be aspiring to be a leader. Failing to observe standards, attend late for meetings, shows disrespect to our participants, does not allow everyone to participate disregards dis or dismiss opinion. So that is not Rohana. He is the upper half of good quality and he doesn't have any bad qualities. And good leader supports the others, provides cognitive and emotional help to team members, judges different team members' abilities and tailors one style of leadership accordingly. And he has that good behavior to make it happen by modifying behavior according to employees or members' needs. If somebody wants to work from home, then he say, okay, we'll let him or her work from home. And he provides constructive criticism and ensures delegation of tasks and establishes rapport between team members, which you can see that he's friendly with all the SAFOG, the committees and members, and he doesn't have any poor behaviors, like not provide recognition for tasks performed well, and fails to recognize needs of others and engages. He doesn't have a tunnel vision. He has a broad vision and a broad range of visions. And he copes well with press pressure, retains a calm demeanor when under pressure, emphasizes to the team that one is under control, even though it can be a high pressure situation. So, so I've observed him at high pressure situations, both at his workplace at Nine Wells, as well as the other organizations with where he has worked as a leader. He remains calm under pressure, although he emphasizes the urgency of the situation, takes responsibility of the organization in emergency, and makes appropriate decision and delegates tasks to achieve its goal and continues to lead the team through emergency. 
He doesn't have the four qualities of freezing when there is a problem or suppress concern over the problem. And he makes sure he delegates responsibility and he doesn't blame anybody. The bad quality is you don't do anything and blame somebody else and loses temper. I don't know whether you have seen Rowan losing temper. So he doesn't lose temper. We had to provoke him and I'm sure I can, I'm looking at the front row and seeing whether you have seen him, him losing temper. They're all smiling. Well, under pressure, you have to be like that pilot. Where faced with pressure should have a situational awareness, precise and timely decision making, regular communication of planned action uh, with the team, followed by precise and confident action. So that is he's <coughs> capable of doing with a professional organization. So the effective leader communicate tasks and responsibilities, balance legal responsibility, involve appropriate resources, communicate expected norms, model appropriate behavior. So I've seen him going for SAFOG as well as for AFOG, meeting lawyers about registering the charity and starting bank accounts and so on, going in the ethical and moral way to be straight. So task management is important. So he has currently set some goals, like I'm saying determined goals. So he has signed with the WHO on the maternal death review and response issue and cancer cervix issue. And he has also decided on the resources needed and he has signed the contract with the WHO. And he provides appropriate information to the respective committees and he will join in to review and make sure the team members do the task. And it needs that if you want to be a good leader to assess the team as a whole and assess the strength and weakness of individual members. I won't tell you who the weak members are in the SAFOG or AFOG team, but he knows who they are. He doesn't tell me, but I can sense it when he sees people and talks to them. So just a warning for all the committee chairs who are not pulling their weights to make sure that you do the work, otherwise he will come on you one day. The other issue of a leader is having an emotional quotient. Know your emotions, manage your own emotions, motivate yourself, recognize and understand others and manage relationship, which he is able to do very well as a leader. They say generally the woman has more emotional intelligence and emotional quotient as a leader compared to a man. So that's why I put a cross there, but I think I had to remove the cross for Rohan. He doesn't really, he has a good emotional caution. And if in an emergency, he must have a helicopter view, rise above the crisis and see the big picture, declare an emergency, communicate, plan and delegate. So he has faced the COVID situation quite well with SAFOG and I think he will continue to lead. So you have to safely uh, plan everything, simplify the problem, look ideas, use all resources, so I'm sure he'll be a good leader for Suffolk and all the other organizations he will lead to. This picture I am putting to show what a team player he is. He is with the working people in his estate. So whatever the work pressure he has in the hospital or with the professional organization, still he visits them in the home country and talks to them, invites them over to come and makes, so that is a very strong. And decision making he has the skills for diagnosing the situation, he considers option, assesses any hazards and give the, so he has all the good qualities to make the appropriate decisions. So I think he can always ask for opinion of other colleagues, so he has external advisors like the past presidents of AFOG. So he will ask them for advice if there's any issue. And he doesn't keep anything to his mind. So the bad qualities are not there and he always undertakes a chosen course of action after consultation and reviews its suitability. And if it needs changing, then he will change flexibility and so on. So good behaviors he has is implement decision, update team on progress, reconsiders the plan. If one plan doesn't work, he can change into another plan. And he doesn't have any of the poor behavioral plans or failing to implement decisions and uh, become hasty or rush to perceive because of the time constraints. He has a peace and he can spend a lot of time with you to make sure the activities take place. 
So this is a bad management, as the car can say, that before we start off, you have to really see, we can look at the options available, evaluate the risk, and so on. So when spending money through Suffolk or Airfork, we make sure that that works. To be intuitive, which comes with experience, and I think he has enough experience after leading a number of organizations and being chairman of a big hospital, certainly he will. So being a good person is very difficult. It's like being a goalkeeper. No matter how many goals you saved, the people will remember the only goals you missed. So as a leader, one cannot always make good decisions. So if he has made some bad decisions, every, every leader will make a bad decision from once in a way. I don't think he has made any other than calling me a friend and family. Otherwise, he has done well. So deciding and communicating options he has done to the, I attended the Suffolk Council meeting today, and he gets everybody to talk about what the activities are and reaches a decision which should go on and which should not go on. And always he informs the whole team. I get emails from time to time, which I'm sure the Suffolk Executive Committee will know, that he sends emails about various things which are not going wrong or going correctly and makes it. So he has a leadership quality in communicating, teamwork, and behaviors. So I'm going to skip a few slides, and uh, I was talking about poor behaviors. He has none of these, because none of the executive board members had a clash. I know that there is always this issue. Just for an example, there's a reproductive committee in Suffolk, and there's an education committee, and some other committee. They all want to do the same thing. So how do you really balance the equation of what education committee should do on polycystic ovary or reproductive committee should polycystic ovary? Both will say, this is my hand. So he has to tease out which one should go which part. So that way he gives good advice to avoid crashing. And I showed you, uh, he brings a shared understanding. And I'm grateful for some of the work. Now this is an important picture which I want to share. This is at Gamini and Godagandagi and Rohana with Mrs. Kularatna, who was a family health bureau director and former chief executive. We visited the ministry and we gave a circular done through the Sri Lankan College support to make postpartum IUD available in all the hospitals as postpartum contraception which I thought was a milestone achievement. So without women undergoing sterilization all the time, we give an option to them if they want to have a short or a long period of reversible contraception rather than non-reversible contraception. So he has this quality of knowing the surroundings, when to approach people, when not to approach, and to approach them at the right time to get it done. And he has a constant vigil. So these two people are looking behind or not looking at what is happening in the front. So Rowena is always forward-looking to make sure that the organizations don't crash. So leader of a professional organization is like life is a game of chess. You cannot undo the moves, but you can make the next step better. So he has been making the steps better, by the way. And I put a story of three envelopes, which I left in the drawer when I stepped down as the president of the Royal College. I gave three advice. Number one, number two, number three, to the next president. So the number one envelope I wrote, if something goes wrong and they blame you, put it on the past president. <laughs> number second envelope, if they complain about something, I said, distract the, they're complaining about A, you talk about B and Z and that and so on. So they distract. That's what the politicians do. When there's a trouble in Kashmir, they will divert your attention to somewhere or some other place. I'm just giving an example. But the third envelope is to say, if you can't succeed by the first two, then time to get out. So I hope, Rohana, that won't come to you. You will continue in your current pursuit in all the organizations you are leading. So I put uh, Rohana as a resilient, to be a good leader of a professional organization. So I've described the characteristic of a resilience leader. One has to accept the changes that happen all the time, so which he has done all the time. I know in his life he had challenges, 
from time to time, from early days, and he accepts the changes and acknowledges the difficulties. If you don't acknowledge the difficulty, you can't go forward. Analyze as to how to resolve the situation and assess by exploring other opportunities. An attitude to have the correct attitude to guide, applies the best solution available, adapts based on advice and available resources, acquires additional information, asks for help, and acts based on reassessment of the situation. So I put 10 A's for a resilient leader. So if any one of you want to be a resilient leader, you must have these 10 qualities that I put. In addition, as Ratnasri mentioned, you have to have these seven C's to be a good quality leader or a clinician. You have to have the commitment for the organization. You must have a compassion for the people whom you work. You must communicate well with your colleagues, your officers, as well as the council. You must have the competence to lead. That's very important, which you have learned, or genetics, or whatever it is. And companionship of teamwork, and commander, leader, and continuity of work. You really start some work, but you pass it on to the next president. So you plan with the president who is going to come next to you so that there's no clash of activities, which he's doing, and he did with Perdozi, and he, I'm sure he will do with Shyam as well. So don't feel bad if people remember you only when you, they need you. Feel privileged that you are like a cattle that comes to their mind when there is darkness. So Rona, if, you, if people don't come to you, all of you can take a photograph with you, don't worry, they'll come to you when the time comes. And after all, he understands the phrase, leaders are servants of those who elect them. And you have been what? So Rona, you have been a servant to the organizations to serve. And knowledge will give you power, but character will give you respect. And you have been a successful leader because you have the intellectual humility. So although he has been president of several organizations, chairman of hospitals, he has the humility, he understands everything, but you can't see him walking in an arrogant fashion or dismissing everybody or so on. He has the humility, he'll stop and talk to you. And that is what I define as intellectual humility, which he has. And this is again, I like to remind him, Rona, you're a great leader, brought pride to Sri Lanka. Your moral and ethical compass was set by your parents, teachers, and mentors, and your inner strength to lead and your devotion to service is due to the sacrifice of your dear wife, Chandrika, and children who have walk, walked by your side in your life journey. So he has to admit to that. So this is, the family can see, so today he is going to worship them and make sure that they continue to support him. And I'd like to finish with that. Your family support has been strengthened by your religious belief of Dhamma, because I have visited many temples with him and Chandrika, wherever we go, and the gift of Dhamma excels all other gifts. So that is what he possesses. He contributes generally, generously, as I showed you, not only to the professional organization, to the medical school, to the reorganization, the hospitals, and everything. So I would like to conclude with that and uh, give all of you a message, because all of you are great leaders. The greatest wealth each of you will possess is your health. And I think many of you are working too hard. So all present in this, in this hall, you're all leaders. The world needs you. Give your best to humanity, but certainly look after yourself. Because if you're not there, then there is nobody to help anyone. So please make sure you have a good work-life balance in some way and look after your health. So thank you for attending, and God's choice and blessings to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The orator, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Sir Sabharatna Maru Kumaran, would like to call upon Nav, President, Sri Lanka College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, Professor Sanatnan Rawl, to present first the certificate of appreciation to the orator of this evening.